This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by our SewHere.com members. This podcast and our community is mostly funded by the support of listeners like you. If you love the podcast, check out SewHere.com slash membership to see how you can keep it in your ears for years to come and get fun stuff to boot. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today, we're going to describe a tutorial for you that we already have a video for. Okay, listen to my voice. Does it sound raspy, or is it my, are my ears plugged up? I don't know. Oh. The, I haven't been out late or anything. All of the weather and everything, just yeah. I can't hear anything. I can't I smell. I can't We're on the talk. We're on the, well, yesterday was the first day of spring. Yeah. Oh my gosh, thank goodness. Because we had the most this is this is the year two thousand and eighteen in case anybody's. It's two thousand nineteen. Oh, it's two thousand nineteen. <laughs> See, I wanna to forget to I've blacked it out. It's two thousand nineteen in case anybody listens to this like you know, fifty years from now or something. But we just had the most gloomiest, wettest, ridiculous winter. Yes, we did. And a lot of people did. The weather's all messed up. And I'm real glad we're tilted, that the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, sun. right now. Okay, so we're going to describe a tutorial for you here. And I think this is nice because sometimes our various channels, I don't think I've got them melded together the way I should. So this is a YouTube video that we've got about this sheer serger scarf. And it's National Serger Month. That's right. Uh, it's being released in April. So that's fabulous. And this is a really quick gift. I think it would be great... Also, I think we would often do it around Mother's Day at the shop, or we would do it in April so that people yeah, well, could have it in wedding season. The thing about it is it's 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 a scarf. It's a, a wrap, a, really. Yeah, kind of. Like a shawl, mm -hmm. a wrap, or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I did want to, maybe I should just address that right here. We've made it out of a chiffon fabric on yeah. the tutorial. And, you know, certainly you could take this idea... Okay, and you know, adjust it for a, a heavier fabric or do it a little bit differently well, or whatever. Yeah, so let's talk about it. It's basically a rectangle. It's a rectangle, it's right? It's got a hole somewhere mm -hmm. in it to put your head through. And actually, a lot of people wear or um, keep these on hand as nursing covers, and yes. they're made out of knit. They're yes. made out of some kind of uh, thin, stretchy fabric right. that's not too hot, and it can be a nursing cover up as well. Right. It can be a shawl. I show it like. They're, Not over right, my and there, there's fo photos of Mal like in it, you know, several different ways. But another thing that I like it for is like traveling. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm in the front seat, and you know, my husband's got the air conditioning blowing, and I don't really want to have like a coat on or it's anything. It's a wearable blanket. So it's like a little blanket or something, <laughs> and it's great for an airplane. Yes, and it's really great for the airplane. You know, my airplane outfit is like the black t-shirt with the black leggings, mm -hmm. so that when I get off, I can like put on a you know, a jacket or something, and I look like I'm dressed, but yeah, it's great. You know, you can use it to add color. It's really good for like those summer things where you're wearing like something sleeveless or a sundress, and then you go into a restaurant that's cold and this can go over your shoulders. It's just really, really applicable. And when you make it, it will fit anyone. Yeah. This is like one of those no size simple. gifts, right? And I feel like we're, you know, where we were coming from with this, you know, is very much of sort of a stereotypical, like, women's garment and stuff. But I just picture some of our fabulous friends like James making this and rocking it. So James does not let any no, sort of any imaginary boundary, boundary mm -mm. stop him with anything. So I just want to say that for all our, you know, non-binary folks right. or if you like to gender bend with your clothing, this is a really cool way to do it. Too, yeah, I, it's just yeah a and I say there's no size. Layer. Now you could actually make this for a small child, and of course, then you, oh, yeah, you know, then you would, would want to think about this. Make it you know, shorter. Like, or... It would need to be a smaller rectangle yeah, when you start true. it out, or whatever. But um, it's also good. For, you know, it takes about two yards of fabric mm -hmm. for an adult. Say. Yeah. 
so sometimes you have two yards of fabric. You don't even want to cut up. You just like the fabric. Yes, it shows off fabric. And this shows fabric off. So border print or, or whatever. It really does show it off. So, yeah, if you are going to make it as a gift, these measurements are pretty universal. Yeah. We have people make them who are all shapes, sizes, heights. Right. You know, I mean, maybe you'd want to customize a bit for yourself at some points. But if you're going to make it for a gift, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's a, it, it really you is. You can use our And like I said, you know. I honestly, just if it was only because you needed it for those restaurants during yeah. the summer when you go in the air conditioning to cover your shoulders and not freeze to death. Right. It's like the perfect thing and it's easy to travel with. So let's talk about choosing fabric. So yep. we used a chiffon, just like a polyester chiffon, uh -huh. and it was a border print, so that was kind of fun. Right. Um you can you know, you could use some dot sequin. I see some dot sequin oh, over there. Maybe yeah. someone did that one time in like a show choir kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, maybe someone one time put some um uh, Malibu feathers on the bottom of one. Marabu. Uh, Malibu. <laughs> uh, Malibu. Oh, oh, my gosh. Thank you for correcting me. You're welcome. That's it's why 2019, you're here. and it's it, Marabu. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I Actually, I was quite ill last week. There's, I have an excuse. I have a chronic illness. There's a... And sometimes my brain cells slow down. No, there's an episode where I get the year wrong, too. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, We could have just pretended like we were way ahead on content. Well, or you would have looked like Malibu Barbie, so you put Marabu feathers there on. You go. There you go. Uh, burnout velvet. I oh think, yeah, you know, so super cool. Fun. Uh, Open weaves. Yeah, kind. Of, I used I used a crepe for one of them. Uh -huh. and actually, lace. I, it was a little too short. So when we say they used two, I I made one that yeah. was shorter, and I it just doesn't quite lay right. Yeah, you need a drape. You you like something that does drape. You don't really want to stiff it. Like I have never made one like out of a cotton, like a quilting cotton. Right. It would have oh, to no. be like a lawn or so. I know. I, you know, it double gauze. Double gauze would People work. People love that lately. Um, anything that's open weave. Amy, you could make it neat. out of your. Uh, what did she get? What did she get that? Well, I, can't I don't know. Have, Amy, and the lady said you have to line it. Lawn. Oh, lawn. lawn. Yeah, yeah, lawn might work. Okay. Lawn, <laughs> as long as it's not, just as long as it's not stiff. I don't think you want it too stiff. Okay, so you get two yards of this fabric. And most fabrics, most garment sewing fabrics are 60 inches wide. Right. Even if you're, Nowadays. Yeah. Even yes. if you're at 54, okay. Yeah. You you can probably go a little shorter, but when you get to those like 45 inch lengths, right. that gets a little. Well, I think what it is, is you want 30 inches. Yes. You know, from a salvage edge. Yes, that's, that's right. what so you 30 want. 30 inches probably, from a salvage at edge. Least. So this is how it's going to hang on you. It's going to hang on you from a cut edge. To a salvage edge, That's basically. right. The cut edge is up at your neck, right. and then the salvage edge is like that hem. So that's why a border print can be fun. So if you get some garment sewing fabric, great. And we just cut our 60-inch fabric in half. Okay? Right. So lengthwise. So, so then you get two scarves. That's right. So, so you can get two scarves out of two yards. So you only need one yard, but it has to be two running yeah, yards. Yeah, unless you... You know, and seaming it together that we got this question. I, I have seamed it. Yeah, you can seam you it. You can seam it. It's but not quite as pretty. It, it, right, because the whole idea is that one side doesn't have a seam, right. and it's the drape it has. And so we used to sell a kit for this because right. we, we had this fabric, and so I cut up a bunch of these. Yeah, it's all gone. Now cut, I see no, that fabric. I want it back. They're all gone. Yeah, so you get the your two yards of chiffon or whatever, burnout velvet, blah, blah, blah. And you cut it up lengthwise. So what you have is a 72-inch long piece of fabric that's 30 inches wide or right. thereabouts, okay? And then what you do is you fold it in half, your short ends together. It's your short cut ends that are perpendicular to your salvage. That's right. And then you, uh, from your halfway, from your fold mark there, um, you're going to uh, measure 15 inches, okay? You're going to mm -hmm. go toward toward that uh, those two cut edges that you put together. And you're going to place two pins. <clears throat> and you don't pin the fabric together. Basically, or clips, or marks. Some marks, way it needs pin, to be, you're something. marking the fabric at, at right. basically you're taking 30 inches uh -huh. out of the middle of of you know of the fabric. edge of this fabric and so you're marking those and what that is is it's your neck your head opening your neck opening and that 15 inches like we said people's heads 
don't really range in size a no. ton. Okay, a 30-inch opening is going to yeah. go over anybody's head. An adult head. head is rarely, <laughs> rarely over 23 inches in circumference. If you can find one that's 24, that's a big head. Yeah, even people who are like, oh, they have a small head or they have a big Most head. Most are like 20 to 22 inches. Yeah, when you actually measure. So that's why we're saying, hey, this is pretty standard. So you get those two. Of you could have some big hair. That's, I was going to say that. So if you have some kind of special James, if you get some big hair. Somebody's like, wait. Wearing some Marie Antoinette wig or something like uh, that. You know, you could, it could be drag night. That's right. Whatever. Or you put this put this on before you put on your wig. I don't know. <laughs> but there we go. So, Speaking of wigs, do I have my good one you on today? have your today? good wig on? Yeah. I just shared the video. I, I forgot what video it was that yeah. the person made that comment, and it was the Jeans Darning Oh, video. Jeans Darning. So I shared it because it was Jeans Month, and Rachel goes, oh, that's where the bad wig comment yeah, was. Yeah, there's a comment that says, bad wig mom. Yeah, we are. We just, we told them. Yeah, I, I know, but it. I'm telling you again. Okay. I love to tell people about my bad wig because it wasn't a wig. It was... I would buy good wigs. That's right. Actually, I just bought Amazon hair, so never mind. Okay, moving on. So you got your neck opening marked, and mm -hmm. then what you're going to do uh, is, we didn't mention this really at the beginning of the podcast, you're going to construct this whole thing with a rolled edge on your serger. serger. So before you go and dive into your scarf, Let's take a quick break and talk about how to select your stitch, what thread to use, and how to test to make sure it's working. Hello there, you fabulous sewing machine. Did you know that our podcasts and Facebook group are mostly funded by our fabulous members? We have corporate sponsors, but our individual members are the people who ensure that we can keep producing our quirky, inclusive, sometimes slightly offbeat sewing media. You can support the sewing media you love starting at $1.50 per month. As you go up the scale, you get perks like a universal wardrobe planner, the So Long and So Happy zine, access to patterns and discounted classes, and even a monthly live broadcast from Mallory and me. We are so thankful for our past, present, and future members. Any level of membership is helpful toward producing our podcasts, videos, and the time it takes to moderate our growing Facebook community. Go to SewHere.com slash membership to check it out. So, 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 sewing out loud. All right, and we're back. So... We're going to use our serger on, right. on the on the YouTube video for this. If you look at the comments, everybody's like, do you have to use a baby lock serger? Right. Now, it is, <laughs> okay, it is very baby lock specific as far as, like, how you're demoing and you're yeah. saying, you know, the baby lock does this and the baby. But obviously, if you have a serger and you know how to set a rolled hem, you can do this. And what does ZD say? Test, 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 test. Test your stitch. That's what it's all about. So we're using a three-thread rolled edge. And the reason we can use this to, like, finish and seam right. the scarf, right, is because there's not a lot of stress on it. There's not a lot right? of stress. And this is like fabric. That's why I said if you're using a heavier fabric, mm -hmm. or a you you may, you know, you're going to have to alter how you do this. Yeah. You can, you're going to have to change the way you do this. You can change up the construction, right. which would not be that difficult no. at all. Okay. So when you are doing a rolled edge on your serger, you want to test and make sure that everything's looking good. And what I highlight in the video is on a baby lock serger, when you put your settings in for a rolled edge, you're going to get your rolled edge like that. Okay. I snapped. Is, I don't it, know if you can hear it. Snapped. <laughs> I, snapped. I snapped. I don't think I can snap. I think my hands are too dry. Oh, anyway. No, there. there. Thank you. Here. <laughs> Mom's tell her yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> If anyone complains about me talking over you, that's why I talk over you sometimes. Because she's embarrassed of you're me. You're snapping into the microphone. She's embarrassed of me. Okay. And if anybody complains about ZD hitting the microphone while snapping. Okay. <laughs> what else? What other reason is there to live for other than to embarrass your children? Oh, yeah. It's one that... of the major things. Yes. Okay. Well, it's I, I bet you're living it's, a very... It's something that keeps you going as you age. You're living a very fulfilling life, right? Because, yes. <laughs> I'm doing my best. I have three three children to torture. Okay, so you've got your rolled edge, and when I test out my stitch, um, you know, on the video, really the only thing I have to mess with is the length, length. of the mm -hmm. stitch. And there are all these recommendations, of course, on your quick reference guide for your baby lock. And I always recommend, you know, 
Put those in first. Right. Put those in first. Try the, try the try the recommendations first. But on a rolled edge, they very, you know, intelligently Pretty, mm-hmm. give you this range. A big range. Yeah. yeah. It says .75 to four. To four or R. something. Yeah. I mean, that's the right. full range. Like right. That's that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Right. And because a rolled edge is going to look different. And on it, so many fabrics, well, right? On different fabrics. Different on your fabric, different with your thread. Yeah. And here's, here's the thing about a rolled edge. You can make a rolled edge stiff or you can make it very supple and yeah. pliable. So depending on how close it is together or how far apart. And then the other thing, is, of course, is those pokies. Yeah. And this is a technical term. Yes. Pokies is a Te- technical term. It's a technical <laughs> term used with serging. And if you're trying to cover or, you know, what we call burnish the edge, Right to make it nice and and smooth. Mm-hmm. We don't want pokies, and pokies are those little threads, right? That, that have been through. cut, mm-hmm. and they're poking through where you know the thread that you're applying has not covered well. Yeah. So I show in the video on the chiffon doing it at two, so it's like kind of right in the right. middle, so a two millimeter length, and that looks really nice. For some reason, two two and a half always seems to yeah, do the trick for seems me. Like a good place. And you're to start. using embroidery thread. That's right. Yeah. Because you wanted it. You're using it sort of in a decorative sense and lightweight. So There's it's two reasons. It's machine embroidery thread. Right. So very smooth, kind of shiny, lightweight. It's polyester. Polyester comes mm-hmm. in lots of colors. We love to put those in our serger right. um, for just for this reason. Right. Okay. So the other thing too is usually people who have embroidery machines have. Colors like this Lots range of colors. of colors with that you don't always have in your um serger construction thread, thread or, or your construction serger thread. thread. So you know the the embroidery thread is easy to match. Yeah. So if you're hemming a dress or, or whatever, right. um, and it's lightweight like this, we oftentimes will say, "Hey, rolled edge with embroidery thread, polyester go, go embroidery it. thread, yes. like silk or um, rayon is not as strong." Okay. So. We're getting that added benefit, you know. And so I, I just want to say I, I chose the two first, and it looks really nice. I do the one. I do a one millimeter length on that in the video. Uh-huh. And you can see that stiffness. Mm-hmm. And I think about, like, maybe for some other project. Oh, yeah. That could have been appropriate. Oh, no, no, no. Right? There might you be know? some. Yes, yes. Yes. So, you know, you might have a personal preference. If that was at the bottom of a dress, you might want it kind of stiff for some reason. Who, who knows? Right. But then I do, I think I do a, a three or a four or something longer, and I get the pokies. You got the pokies. And it, it did. It, it just didn't look nice. Yeah. It wasn't finished nice. Now, what if I was, you know, what could make a difference? I'm thinking about burnout velvet a lot for uh-huh. some reason right now. I think... When you do something like burnout velvet, where the texture of the fabric changes from like right. chiffon to something uh-huh. with a pile, you might get some pokies or some variation. You might get a little lump in there. A little lump of bump. It might not even be discernible though That's right. from, from you know somebody standing three feet away from you. Yeah, so don't like obsess too much. Right. But you know, just give it a test, and this can be a really great way to get to know your serger too. It is. Yeah. So um, just test that you out. You can on make a like four hundred of these for Mother's yes, that's Day very or whatever. True. And- Try it all out. <laughs> and you know what? Okay, this is really a time when you can go to that bargain bin, uh-huh. okay, and find this two-yard remnant that is like some weird pattern chiffon that maybe you would never buy or you can't, or even a weird color uh-huh. that you think, what would I use this for? But you make this wrap, and it's, like, cool. Yeah, and if you have – we got some, like, hand-dyed silk in the yes. shop one time. Mm-hmm. People made them, and it was just absolutely beautiful. And so the reason I bring up the baby lock serger in the video is because we love them so much. But well, yeah. I didn't have to mess with my tensions. Just messing with length. Right. Just to see how much coverage right. I want, but purely for aesthetic purposes. And so this is going to be our seam, and this is going to be our finished right. edge. So your finished edge and your seam are you're using exactly the same stitch. Okay, and then the next part it takes longer to explain than to do. Right. Okay. So you have your pins placed where we told you to place them. And, and this is all in this video, you yeah. guys. So, so if we're painting a lousy picture, like verbally. Go 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 to the video. No, but I watched the video and I was like, oh, there's a way to say this that is better. <laughs> now, I in the video, it's it's pretty right. clear. But you've marked what she's saying is you've marked your neck opening. Right. You mark your neck opening, and what you're going to do is you're going to sew between your pins. Or okay? your marks, or, or whatever, whatever you've done. Or whatever. Maybe you've delineated your neck opening. 
So you're going to put the presser foot, you know, where you've got one of those marks, take out your pin, take out your clip or whatever, and then create a rolled edge. And you're just going to... And you use your blade. That's right. You're going to sew to your other pin. So you sew between the pins. And then ZD said, you're going to use your blade. So why do you always use your blade? Well, one reason on especially a rolled hem is because it cuts exactly the perfect distance to roll that fabric and have it encased in that stitch. So you want a nice cut. So I always take off, you know, a fair amount, like more than like what I call a skinny edge. I mean, I take off what, maybe three eighths of an inch or something. I, you know, in the video, I don't really, I don't really, really? cut in that much. I do. I could. Yeah. Well, you, could. I, you know what? It probably depends on the fabric too. Yeah. Sometimes the fabric, you need to take more, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just doesn't, you know, you need to make sure, what you want to make sure is you have a good cut, clean edge with that knife. So I don't, you know, cut in in the video, but if you think it's looking better when you well, cut off and one, you've already tested. Right. Not so that you in. would know. Okay. So you sew between your pins and then the magic happens. Okay. So you have this, you know, 30 inches of surged fabric behind your foot, but then you also have some unsurged fabric behind your foot too, because you started in the middle of your fabric, and you fold it in half, and you bring those unfinished edges together, okay? So you, you know, fold it back in half like you did to mark And you're those, doing this opening. while it's on the machine, yeah, so that's why you want to watch the video. You yeah. don't, so when you stop... You don't take your fabric out. You That's just right. bring over this other edge yeah. and, and, and stick it on. It's, it's kind of a clever little deal. Right. So then you just put them together, and then you surge, and now you're surging on two layers. Ta-da. Making a seam. You go all the way down, you make your seam, and now you can see the shape of the garment. Right. Now, okay. you're, now you're going, oh, I just made a scarf. All I have to do is hem it. Ta-da. Yes. So that's why it's so easy because you just get to do this all, you know, that seam right. all in one fell swoop. And then you hem your other edges. And, you know, I was trying to figure out if there was a reason to hem the short edge first or the long edge first. And you say, I can't think I of one. I can't think of one either. Yeah. So I, I think I, I think I've always done like <laughs> the the one with the seam in it, uh -huh. you know, that edge because. I guess because I think, oh, well, I'll take care of this because I do have to go over that little lump in the seam and, you know. Right. That's the hard That's the hard part first, and it's not even that difficult. Yeah, so. I don't know why. It's just that's sort of the habit I've, yeah, and that's how you did it too, I think. Yeah, whichever one you want to do first, you finish that edge, cutting off a little bit, right, so mm -hmm. that you get your nice, perfectly calculated. You know, I'm trying to remember, like, when I started making these scarves and why, because there was a reason, and I can't remember. Okay. So uh, then maybe you... maybe it's so I could have a surgery class. <laughs> good idea. Probably was because people wanted a surgery class. I probably thought, oh, this is a good one. Someone posted in the group. They're like, did you know that you can make your own fabric by surging onto water soluble stabilizer? Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's we know. No, <laughs> and they're like, oh, you I'm can gonna... make your own lace. I'm too. like, yeah, because that sells a lot of thread. You know. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful and fun that's right. too. It is. It is. But. Yes, we, no, we do know that. people have made, like, entire garments oh, yeah. out of fabric like that. Yes. No, it's the neat, it's cool. Well, you know, you, do you know you can make fabric out of, like, pull tabs? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can make fabric out of anything. That's right. That's right. That's right. Like, pull tab chain mail, right. sort of. I, I saw a, a, a fence made out of beer bottle tops, just uh -huh. the top of the can. It was, like, it was really cool. Like, yeah, well, that's a good, together. There, there you go. So, I don't know that you want to wear them, but. Now that you have your one end finished, you're going to finish your other end, but this is important. So this is another reason that I like the baby locks is they make a reliable chain. They will chain. M most sergers will. Okay. But not reliably. That's what is, I, I have guess what heard. I'm going to say. Uh, yes. They should, but they don't always, I yeah. guess. So when we say chain off, mm -hmm. you know, the machine will chain off and it will maintain that chain. And some sergers just tend to, like, lose the chain for some reason. I think it's they just can't form the stitch without the fabric there, I guess. Well, and the baby lock has some special stitch fingers that make that oh, possible. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all stuff. about its stitch fingers and all now, that. Now, this yeah. is not true for the cover stitch, okay? So we're, we're talking about overlocking, right. not for cover stitch. No, we're just talking about a serger. And then that's another thing people do is they will create their own yarn. With or the a rope across the entire yes. length of your store. <laughs> yep. That's right. So what you have to do, though, when you decide which edge you're doing first, you know, 
Your second one, you need to chain off a little bit on your surgery, leaving yourself a nice long tail that's well, like yeah. six inches long or something, right? Right. Okay. You're, you're leaving tails because at the, these points, you're going to use these tails. That's right. At the points of your hem. So then and you, you only have two points on your hem. That's right. And one of the, the when I do when I do my long hem second, it's the selvage edge. Right. Okay. And I mentioned that you can see the little pin pricks right. from the loom. So you may want to cut that off. I cut right. off like a I, I cut off a good yeah, inch you did. There. You cut off at yeah. least a half inch. I couldn't see it yet. So that I maybe it was only half inch. Yeah. So I, I could get rid of those. But where they where you know the pins were holding it in the loom. She cut those holes off. Yes. That were so when you leave that visible. nice long edge and then you go, and this is another reason to cut off so that you can enclose your previous surger, surger stitched hem. Right. And this is a thing, make sure, you know, if those of you who are new to surging, when you start to cut your fabric, make sure you're sort of pushing your fabric toward the needle, don't, toward the blade. Yes. Don't let the presser feet push the fabric away from the blade because then you'll get a cut and then not a caught right. and it edge. won't get caught right and that can be a problem so we want to catch that and so. that's that might be that's technique so yes, you might have to practice that mm -hmm. a little you know sit around and do some corners for a no, while and i've missed it before you know and and if you miss it you can go back and cut a little bit more off you that's know what, exactly what i would do yes <laughs> it's been done it's been done so if you're um now you got your your one tail and you begin stitching. So now what it looks like is you got this corner and you got right. the serger tail hanging off of it. Normally we don't want this, right. but we're going to use it. <laughs> so you've created a thread that you may have clipped in the past or that would That's have right. been tucked in immediately or surged over, but you're keeping it. You get to that other end. And once again, even when you're coming off of that hem, make sure that you catch that corner because there is time and space between when the fabric gets cut and when it gets overlocked. Right. So just make sure you're doing that. So if you have left a tail uh -huh. from before, what you can do is you can sort of hold that tail and bring it under that presser foot. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? That yeah. helps you hold that fabric. Uh -huh. you know, up close to the knife. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Right. So you're surging off, right. and then, okay, don't cut your tail close to okay. your fabric. No, no, we want you to have, <laughs> like, five or six inches on on each corner here, okay, of this yes. crocheted tail. But I've seen people, they're like, oh, this is so cool. I'm making a scarf, and then they'll just buy right. have it cut close cut it. to the, now, the fabric. Now, if you do cut it, we, there, you know, I mean, there's a workaround sure. always, but it's nice to have this. Yes, so you got that tail. So, like, you've made your scarf, and it's hemmed. Ta-da. And then something that we like to do is use those tails, and we put beads on them. And in my video that I made, I use these kind of wimpy little beads. Oh, my gosh. Like, so wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no idea there were wimpies on here. We This was a, an impromptu video. I think it's a pretty good video for being so impromptu. But we, on, on like a serger scarf that you'd made years before, there's like this gigantic Swarovski crystal. Well, and I, that's more right. appropriate. And I like them for weight. <laughs> yes, they're okay? weight. And, and they're you weight. can use a charm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, what... So they help the drape of it, basically. Yeah. Or they also even help you sort of... Um, negotiate the geography of the scarf yeah. when you're putting it on. Like, oh, here's the ends that, you know. I want it to be right. here or there. So I would usually use like a small sort of, not a seed bead. It would be bigger than that. Um, I use seed beads. I used wimpy seed that, beads. Okay, but I might start with a seed bead, then put a big, you know, hunky uh, crystal something yes. Yes. on it, you know, and then maybe another seed bead as my anchor bead before I go back up through. But... Um, the one thing about this is we know we want to test to make sure that our needle will go through the hole the, in the, the hole bead, in the bead yeah. right? And, yeah. you know, with, with the thread on it and all that. So you will you will need to test that. So you can't use too small of a bead because the bore of the hole will not be big enough to let a needle pass through. Now, the other thing is, is you can't really use, like, a beading needle because the eye of it won't be big enough for the surgery for, chain. for the surgery chain so you need to like think about all that stuff well and your surgery chain you know so it's you know it's three threads put together right so you can clip that kind of flatten it out and it'll go through a pretty small right and, needle. and exactly what you said though is you can flatten it out yeah. so you flatten it out i flatten it out kind of first with my hand mm, and then, and clip, then it. clip it on an angle mm -hmm. like a 45 degree angle so i can like 
you know, put it through the eye. Coax usually. it through the needle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got a point to go through the eye. Absolutely. And that's another reason to use, like, the embroidery thread. Right. It keeps that whole tail right. really nice and lightweight. And so did you know, I just shared a um, an article in the newsletter, in the Love Note, and it was the VNA um, had done x-rays of Balenciaga garments, and it showed, like, I guess some people thought that there were no corsets in these gowns or or something and it shows boning you know it shows steel boning in there and then also like a lot of weights are used to ensure that the that the garment would drape in the way that the designer wanted it place. yes right. because you know if you just drape your fabric it right. might not have enough weight to actually hang right. in the way that you want it right. you know so there are things you know Dress weights, or people will talk about yes. sewing well, pennies into things. Right, or something. coins. Um, you know, you can buy. <laughs> okay, you can go, and you can also buy like drapery weights. Yeah, and I've done where I've gone to go buy the drapery weights, and the drapery weights cost more than the money. Like I might as well just sew the yeah. penny in. Uh, <laughs> another thing are small chains. Okay, yeah, chains. Uh, we yeah. have a roll of that gold chain. That how many hems have I used that in? Like a million. Now I probably wouldn't yeah. use it on this garment. No, no, no. But you I know, don't, I don't think so. Well. I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. Hey. I don't know what you guys got hanging Ooh. around, but. What if somebody did, like, sew, like, chain on the end of it? That would be cool. It would like, be pretty. Thing. That could be it could fun. It be pretty, yeah. And they use those uh, in, like, the Chanel jackets. Right. Or chains chains to and Chanel. So, and, you know, I use those little chains, like, on the back of the jacket to hang it up. You know, yeah. To make a hanger, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. But, um, so, yes. And, you know, make it your own. Do not use the puny beads Mallory used. Yeah, They're ridiculously ZD, puny. ZD and I were I was rewatching like, the video this? just to make sure we like included right. everything and stuff. You know, in this in this now if you're making podcast, if you're making your Christmas Santa Claus thing with your Malibu on it, Malibu, your, your Marabou on it, right? <laughs> your your red chiffon. You can put jingle bells on oh, it. Oh, oh, like I just picturing like some white Christmas action yeah, or something that's like that. Right. If someone makes like a a red chiffon, one of these uh, with Santa white, baby. with white Malibu. <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> Gosh, I'm going to be saying Malibu the rest of my life now. <laughs> so Maribu, Barbie, and Malibu feathers. This is a great project to do with like a friend too, or like this you, is a good you know, child's project. Yeah, too. good kids' yeah. project to make gifts. But I know some people like. They like to sew with other people and kind of do like projects together. Uh-huh. So yeah, I yeah. This would be really cute. For well, that. I think we gave it as a class one time right before Mother's Day. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th- I it think was... it was Mother's Day, and then I think everybody wanted it again, so we kind of did one, and we we made um, it. It called it, you know, something like the shawl cover up. And remember when I made you that cover up? Um, it wasn't. It wasn't this, but it was out of that open weave mm-hmm. uh, fabric. And a lot of people made a swimsuit cover up using this, using yeah. this out of like that open netting stuff, you know. The, right. The, it's not really lace. I don't know what it, it's just open weave. Yeah, stuff. like netting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it was, it was like right. laser cut right. or something right. like that. So this really, though, gives you a good place to start messing around with your serger and the rolled edge settings and stuff, yes. too, that's kind of safe to play around with. Well, so. and it's fun and you mm-hmm. finish it and and, you know, you can be real proud. And, and you know, if you don't have a serger, you know, you can finish the edges and seam it together and get this look, Absolutely. Too, you, know? you know, you can look at the principle of how it's done. Right. And, and, you know, come up with your version. Should not be a problem at all. I would do probably like a tiny hem. Yeah. 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 And then the, I, I did, I think I used that one as a nursing cover-up. You know, uh, sometimes it was really just easy. And it's using something sheer as a nursing cover-up, uh-huh. like... No one can really see No one anything, sees it, but you can tell what you you're can, doing. That's right. And right. it's nice and breathable, so that can be good. That can be nice. Um, well, thank you all so much for listening. You can find us on Instagram. We are at SoHereCom. And you can email me at Mallory at SoHere.com. Take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SoHere.com.